Hello everyone, welcome to your second lesson on the B18 chapter, which is air pollution. For this lesson, we're going to be looking at explaining how acid rain is formed and how it can cause damage. And you also need to be able to describe the problems caused by smog and how this can be reduced. Your quick task is at the bottom. From last lesson, I would like you to try and recall what biodiversity is and how humans are affecting it. So pause the video here, write down your title, date and objectives and complete the quick task. Here are your answers for the quick task. Biodiversity, as per our previous lesson, is a measure of the variety of all of the living species of organisms on Earth or within an ecosystem. So depending on the context we're using the word biodiversity, we might be talking about the whole world or we might just be talking about a specific ecosystem. For example, the Amazon rainforest or um, a, a woodland in the UK. Um, and how are humans impacting on it? Well, because of our um, need for food, we farm, we produce um, fertilizers which go into those ecosystems. We also need water that we use and we also pollute the water. We also use land to build upon and to develop upon and that means that's less available land for wildlife. And the one we're going to focus on today is the pollution we produce. So the things that we give off as waste all have impacts on biodiversity and living things. So today let's look at air pollution. First of all, I want you to have a think, maybe jot down some bullet points or talk to someone if you're sitting with someone about how we pollute the air. So think about all the activities we do to pollute the air. Now, the two images I'm showing you here are both the same um, view of London, but from slightly different angles. And um, what I'll do is I'll just put an arrow here. This is um, number one canary wolf. Here it is here as well. So you can see that this is before lockdown and this is after lockdown. So what are the differences and how is it that we're polluting the air? Pause the video, have a think, and then press play when you're ready. OK, so as um, you can see, there's a massive difference between the amount of air pollution in both of these images. The first picture here, you can see there's a lot of smog and smoke. It's very thick and difficult to see through. Then after lockdown, when people are staying at home, not traveling to work, etc., etc., you see that the sky looks really clear and that there's no visible smog. So the way that we actually pollute the air is through burning fossil fuels. So, for example, we burn petrol, which comes from crude oil in cars. We also burn fossil fuels in factories and, of course, in power stations to generate electricity. So how is acid rain formed? Well, I'm going to talk you through this diagram. So first of all, we're going to start off in this corner where we've got a car and a factory or power station. And both of those are burning fossil fuels. So that's probably oil or coal. And obviously in the car, it's petrol, which comes from oil. Now, here we can see the exhaust fumes coming out of the exhaust of the car and the uh, chimneys or flues from the factory. And both of those things, the car exhaust fumes and the chimney flue exhaust fumes, um, give off nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is formed when impurities from fossil fuels are burned and react with oxygen. Nitrogen oxides are formed when the nitrogen in the air is forced to react with the oxygen in the air and they're kind of forced together because of the high heat and the enclosed space. So both the nitrogen oxides and the sulfur dioxide are gases in the air and what happens is obviously in the air there's humidity, there's moisture and these gases are highly soluble, they like to dissolve in that water. What happens is the acidic gases dissolve in atmospheric water and they come together and form clouds, the wind blows them to a particular area and the acidic gases which are dissolved in the cloud liquid also form rain and snow that falls down onto the land. Now, the problem is that this can build up. So it's not just a case of one bit of acid rain one day. Or you might think, oh, well, when I go out in the rain, it's not like I can feel it on my skin or anything. But the problem is, is if that continuously rains over and over again, over a number of days, a number of weeks, a number of months, a number of years, onto one patch of land, it's going to build up and accumulate. And it accumulates on the land, in the forests and in waterways. So plants, animals, lakes and rivers are damaged by acid rain. Um, another example um, that I want to talk to you about, because we talked about acid rain and snow, is this. So 
um, I'm not going to talk about weather like day to day weather like when it's wind or whether it's still, but I'm talking about the air currents high up in the atmosphere. The air currents high up in the atmosphere kind of go like this across the um across uh, the across Europe across all the countries and sometimes they go a bit north sometimes they, they go a bit further downwards like where this one is but what happens is all of these countries in Europe are producing um pollution all the ones I've just drawn around some produce more than others but what happens is this pollution gets caught up in these um wind currents high up in the atmosphere and they blow upwards and what happens is you get more accumulation in the countries in these areas. So Finland is very prone to acid snow. So what happens is all the pollution from across Europe moves upwards through these air currents, ends up over Finland. And obviously Finland is very high north, so it gets very cold, so it snows, okay? The snow comes down over winter and builds up layer upon layer upon layer. So all through winter, you've got layers and layers and layers of snow building up. Then come spring, all of those layers of snow melt and suddenly the earth underneath, all the plant life and animal life is hit with one massive big whack of acidic liquid. It all happens all at once in springtime. So it's really, really bad for Finland, especially since it's not even their pollution to start with. OK, so what I would like you to do is complete this gap fill exercise so that you've got your key notes. Pause the um, video to do this and then when you're ready to press play and I'll go through the answers. And here are your answers. When fossil fuels are burned, the pollutant gases, nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Tiny particles called particulates also form smoke. The pollutant gases dissolve in the rain to make dilute sulfuric acid and nitric acid. This is known as acid rain. It can kill off trees, pollute lakes and rivers, and if it builds up, it could kill animal life as well as plant life. So obviously that has an impact on biodiversity. OK, so here's another image that I've uh, found on uh, the Internet, and this is um, from before and after lockdown. And this is Delhi before lockdown. And you can see that the pollution is really, really bad. It's actually so dangerous that it's really unsafe for people to be out walking in it and breathing that in. And then after lockdown, when everyone stopped going to work, stopped driving everywhere, stopped burning as many fossil fuels, you can see that the air completely cleared up. This also had an impact in the UK. So this is um, a news article taken from The Guardian where um, during um, lockdown, um, asthma sufferers were much healthier and there was less um, reporting lung disease and symptoms and so forth during this time. Um, less hospital admissions for asthma as well. And this is from um, a European organisation that monitors air pollution across Europe. And these are all the different countries. That's very, very small and you can't see it. But these are all the different countries listed here. This is how much um, uh, pollutant air levels were present in the air before lockdown. And afterwards, you can see there's quite um, a reduction. Apart from Portugal, that's gone from 58% to 55%. It's not much of a reduction. But um, again, this has had um, a massive reduction on the number of air pollution related deaths. So we can see that actually when we stop burning these fossil fuels and we stop making all these pollutants, not only will it have a positive impact on wildlife and nature and biodiversity, but actually it directly um, benefits us because we're not breathing it in. OK, what I'd like you to do is have a read of these definitions and guess which one marries up to which um, of the keywords on the left. Read them first and then write them in the correct order. Pause the video and I'll go through the answers once you're ready to press play. And here are your answers. So smoke is made up of tiny physical particles called particulates. And um, when those particulates are released into the air, when fuels are burned, they cause global dimming and also directly affect human health. Global dimming is to do with the sun's um, infrared rays being reflected back into the atmosphere, which cools the planet down. And obviously you would think that's a good thing because it means it's against, it's like the opposite of global warming, but it's, it's actually not because there's obviously all the smoke pollution in the air as well. Okay, so next we're looking at acidic gases, which is here. And as you already know, these substances mix with atmospheric moisture to cause acid rain.
And lastly, smog. Smog is a combination of acidic gases and smoke, which we looked at when we saw the New Delhi picture. Um, it often occurs in cities and causes problems for human health and as well as for nature. Okay. Okay, your next task is to either use the Biology AQA textbooks on page 290 or 291. You could use BBC Bite Size or use other websites on the internet. It depends on what you feel more comfortable looking at and reading and so forth. And I want you to write a paragraph about how humans are trying to reduce the amount of air pollution produced. Um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video here, do a little bit of research, write your paragraph and then come back and I'll talk through some of the points you might have included in your paragraph. So here are some of the answers you might have got from writing your paragraph and doing your research. This is just an example of some of the things you might have written. So firstly, um, catalytic converters on car exhausts. So from the engine, the gas comes through the catalytic converter, uh, sorry, comes through this pipe to the catalytic converter, which is here. And inside there's like um, a honeycomb structure of ceramics. So it's like ceramics with gaps inside it. And that allows a surface for reactions to occur so that the dangerous things coming out of the engine can be converted into less dangerous things. Um, and that goes out of the exhaust pipe here. Another example is power station chimney systems, which um, at the, these are the chimneys where the fuel, the fumes come out of, the dangerous gases um, in a coal powered power station. And they will have something similar to a catalytic converter in that it's chemical, a process that allows chemical reactions to occur and remove some of those more dangerous gases. We um, can also increase the use of biofuels, and you learned about biofuels in B17, so if you can't remember about that, maybe do a bit of revision on biofuels. Um, also, using nuclear energy is um, less polluting than using fossil fuel energy, and renewable energy resources. So, for example, we've got solar panel here, or we might use wind farms. And lastly, um, we try to agree pollution targets with other countries, but the problem is they always get breached. So I think, um, you know, very early into January this year, the pollution targets were already breached in some regions and areas, especially in London. So really, the pollution targets are only useful if we stick to them. What I'd like you to do to finish off is to have a look at these sentences and try to finish them. You can do it by writing it down if you choose to, or you can do it by talking if you prefer, because you have done a lot of writing this lesson. So pause the video, finish the sentences, and then we'll, uh, we'll get ready to end this lesson. Okay, so have you met your objectives? Well, if you were able to correctly, precisely and easily answer all those, finish those sentences on the last slide, I'm sure you have met your objectives. So if you can explain how acid rain is formed and how it can cause damage, then you need to draw a smiley face next to the objectives you wrote at the start of the lesson. If you're not sure, it's a middle face. Or if you're really unhappy and you really don't get it, sad face. Do the same for your second objective. Can you describe the problems caused by smog and how this can be reduced? Smiley, middle or sad face. OK, and as always, um, if you've identified that you've not met all of the objectives or you think you need to study in more depth, here are the resources I would recommend. Uh, on YouTube, you've got videos by Primrose Kitten or from Free Science Lessons. You could use Caboodle and log on to that to open up the AQA Biology book and use page 290 to 291, read through the text and answer the questions if that's the sort of learning you prefer. You could try BBC Bite Size. I know that there are some quizzes and videos on there that you might find useful. You could also try GCSE Pod or Seneca Learning if you find those resources useful too. So well done for your hard work today, everyone, and I'll see you in your next lesson. Thank you very much.